Hi, I'm Aaron from Living Science Videos. Every minute that you watch this video, you lose an average of 30,000 to 40,000 skin cells. The video is not causing that. It would have happened anyway. But those dead skin cells really add up. By the end of the day, you will have lost 50 million skin cells. Where do they go? They're microscopic, so you can't see them drifting all around you. Then they settle to become that layer of dust on the bookcase. Yeah, <laughs> that's mostly dead skin. And you have more than just skin cells, like bone cells and liver cells. An average adult has about 37 trillion cells combined. To put that in perspective, there are at least 100 billion stars in our galaxy, and a trillion is a thousand billions. So each of us is like our own little cosmos of living cells. Imagine if you lost those cells and had no new cells to replace them. How would you grow, defend yourself from infection, or repair a cut? It's a good thing for living cells that they produce new cells through cell division. Your cells that divide asexually are called somatic cells, and the process they use is called mitosis. Mitosis is a part of the cell cycle where a cell's nucleus divides into two nuclei and a set of DNA for each of the two new daughter cells. Millions of your cells divide every second, but what if they just divided without any sort of instructions? How can a skin cell carry out all its functions without any sort of instructions, like a computer program needs a code to perform its functions properly? The instructions or genetic information for cells' functions are encoded in the DNA. DNA code is very complicated and would take a lot of room inside a cell if it weren't bundled really tightly into packages of chromosomes. All of your somatic cells have 23 pairs of 46 chromosomes. The complex of chromosomes and proteins is called chromatin. And before cells actually divide, they spend most of their time in a cellular cycle called interphase, or the growing phase. During interphase, they are performing their normal function of making a copy of DNA in preparation for the cell to divide. Most cells of adult mammals spend 20 hours in the interphase, which is divided into three parts. G1, S, and G2 phases. The G stands for gap. During G1, the first phase of interphase, the cell does most of its growing. The cell grows in size and synthesizes its organelles and proteins. Also, RNA is produced. Next, the S phase, which stands for synthesis. What the cell synthesizes in this phase is all the important instructions for the cell or DNA. By the end of S phase, chromosomes are duplicated, so there is a totally new copy of the cell's DNA. The final phase of interphase is G2, the shortest part. During this part, daughter centrioles grow to the size of the parent centriole. The chromosomes are also finished copying. Now that the cell has grown in size and number of organelles, the cell's own DNA can't keep up with running the cell's processes. So the next phase has an elegant solution. It's called M phase, which has two stages. The M stands for mitosis, which has four different parts, and after the second stage, cytokinesis occurs where the cytoplasm is divided. The four phases of mitosis can be remembered in order as PMAT. I'm here with an explanation of the phases of mitosis, so simple that a child should be able to understand it with a fair amount of effort, is micro-ra. Lizards are neat creatures. They have a third eye on the top of their head. They have sprawling legs, and some have regenerating tails. These tails regenerate because of mitosis in the same way your liver regenerates its wounds. But how does mitosis happen? Mitosis starts out with a prophase. The prophase is when large mass of DNA and proteins, aka the chromatin, condenses. This creates visible chromosomes. Chromosomes are gargantuan strings of DNA that wrap around all over the place in some organized manner. These chromosomes replicate into a sister chromatin, which is almost, if not entirely, identical to the original DNA. After that happens, the mitotic spindle forms from the microtubules, which are really long proteins. These processes are followed by the prometaphase. The prometaphase is when the nuclear envelope, the structure that closes off the nucleus, breaks down, which causes the sister chromatids to float around instead of being bound to the nucleus, which allows it to be separated into two cells. A protein called the kinetochore also binds with a centromere, which binds together the two chromatids. After that, the true metaphase begins. The metaphase is when the DNA starts to get separated into two daughter cells. While this happens, the chromosomes end up in the middle of the cell due to the two sides pulling on them. Long strings called the kinetochore microtubules extend from either end of the cell and attach to the kinetochores. Then the anaphase begins. The anaphase is when the mitotic spindle separates the chromatids. These sister chromatids, now separated, go to opposite sides of the cell. Then the final stage initiates, the telephone. Wait, no, I mean the telophase. Close enough. 
The telophase is when the sister chromatids on either side get their own nuclear envelope, creating two nuclei. Then, both sides of the cell is split in two, creating two new cells. This happens over and over again, until you have your tail, part of liver, or many other things back again. Thanks, Micro Ra. And remember, M phase has two stages, the first being mitosis and the last being cytokinesis. Now, at the end of mitosis, the two daughter cells have their own nuclei and they're still joined and share a cell membrane and cytoplasm. In animal cells, the cell membrane pinches inward in the middle of the two daughter cells are separated. A protein filament called actin forms a ring that contracts, separating the two daughter cells. Actin filaments in the cytoskeleton also help the cell move and are part of the reason that muscles contract. Plants are different. Remember that plant cells have a rigid cell wall and it's not flexible enough to draw inwards in the middle. So a cell plate forms in the middle instead. Either way, voila, a new cell is formed and the cycle continues. But how does a cell regulate when each phase of the cell cycle occurs? This can be a problem, like for example, if too many centrioles are involved and you don't get a bipolar split. The resulting daughter cells would be unstable. Also important is when would it know to start and stop dividing into new cells? Scientists wondered about that too until the 1980s. Then they found a protein that when injected into a cell that wasn't dividing would develop a mitotic spindle. They named it cyclin because it appeared to regulate the cell cycle. These cyclins work inside and outside the cell. Internal regulator cyclins do things like make sure the cell doesn't enter mitosis until chromosomes are formed. External regulator cyclins respond to factors outside the cell to slow down or speed up cell division process. Like for example, External regulators on the cell surface signal the cell to slow down if it touches too many other cells in the same area or speed up if there's more room to grow. When you get a cut, your skin cells are signaled by cyclins to speed up the mitosis to replace the cells you lost. Another important factor that is regulated is when a cell dies. Now, some cells die by accidental damage or injury, like when you scratch your cell. Other cells are programmed to die in a process that is called apoptosis. If apoptosis is triggered, the cell self-destructs in controlled stages. Abnormal amounts of apoptosis can be fatal, such as during the disease AIDS. Unfortunately, sometimes mitosis does get out of control and unregulated cell growth can cause cancer. A cancerous cell is one that doesn't respond to regulatory signals and divides out of control. They form a mass of cells called a tumor. Not all tumors keep growing out of control. Some are called benign tumors that don't spread and destroy healthy tissues like some moles. Tumors that destroy healthy tissues are called malignant and are considered cancerous. Cancer is caused by a defect in the cell's genes. Genes are a distinct series of nucleotides that form a section of a chromosome. They can be damaged by carcinogens like cigarettes. A number of cancers have been traced to a defective P53 gene. And cancer is one of the leading causes of death worldwide. 8.2 million deaths were caused by cancer in 2012. But by studying the process of cell division and how cells regulate the process leads to new treatments to prolong life. General cell division is happening every second of your existence, the vast majority of the time making healthy, non-cancerous copies of your body cells. It would be pretty cool to have regenerative abilities like a lizard and be able to replace entire missing body parts. Then you'd be like a fictional comic book hero like Wolverine or Deadpool. Your cells would be triggered to activate hypermitosis to replace a missing parts, bone, muscle, skin, etc. But back in the real world, mitosis is right now necessary for your continued existence, repairing, copying, replacing your individual cells. Mm -hmm.